Today we're going to learn how to delete points after some number of frames in simulation nodes to create a lifetime attribute control. So let's do it. Okay, so what we want to do today, I'm going to show you really fast with a particle system. Let's add a particle system. If we press play, we have this object creating particles. Let's disable gravity in field weights. And what I want to do in simulation nodes is to have a particle system and try to create this lifetime attribute. This is the life of the particles. So now it's 50 frames, but if we decrease this, we are making shorter the life of the particles, as you can see, or we can make it longer. So we want to create this in simulation nodes. And also we are going to try to create this lifetime randomly. That means that if we increase this, the lifetime of the particles are random. Some are longer, some are shorter. Okay. So let's delete this, and now let's go to Geometry Nodes. Let's go here and create a new profile. First of all, I'm going to use a Ubit Sphere. And let's create these two particles. So let's use Distribute Points on Faces. Now, what we want is to move these particles outside. So to do this, we are going to use simulation zone. Now, how we connect this, what we're going to do is to disconnect this, connect this here, and we're going to use join geometry. Let's connect it here. So now, if we open this, and if we press play here in the spreadsheet, you can see that we have 128 points. And if I press play, this is adding more and more points. You cannot notice anything here, but here you can see all the points are stacking in the same position. So what we want is to move these points in the normal directions. So to do this, what we have to do is to add here set position. And we need to use the normal of this object. So we need to get the normal before converting to face. So let's use a store name attribute. And let's use normal, very important. Let's convert this to vector. And let's write something like object normal. Now, here we need to use this information to offset the particles in the normal direction, right? So let's use here name attribute and select vector and reuse the name of object norm or the name that you created. And now let's connect it here. And now if we come back at the beginning, I'm going to reduce this because I like it more. Now we have this. Perfect. All the particles are moving in the normal directions. By the way, if you are a bit lost about how to use simulation nodes, I have a really good tutorial explaining the basics, so I recommend you to watch it. Now, the problem that we have is that all the particles are moving in the same direction. So what we have to do is to add here in seed a scene time in frame. So every frame, we will have different positions for the particles. So we have a particle system. Okay, we have too much particles, as you can see. So let's decrease the number here, for example, one. And let's restart again. Okay, that's much better. Let me add some names here. Okay, so we have this, this particle system. By the way, if you want to reduce the velocity, what we have to do is to go here. And we need to add a vector math in the middle of this process, of the process of using the normal, and select a scale. And now, if we reduce this number, as you can see, it's going slower. Okay, perfect. So now the question is how we create a control to have the lifetime of these particles and not to accumulate all the particles. So to do this, what we have to do is to use store name attribute. Why? Because we need to create like an attribute 
to get the lifetime. So here, let's write, for example, lifetime. And we need to use a vector math and connect it here. And here, select one. So every frame, we are going to stack one value. This will be the life of the particles. However, if now we leave it like that, it doesn't do anything. Actually, if you want to see the lifetime, we need to click points. And here, here we have the object normal. But here, as you can see, we have the lifetime of all the particles created. Look. However, as you can see, all have one value. Why? Because we are not accumulating, reusing this value. So every frame, they have one of lifetime. So we need to do something else. To make this work, we need to connect here, name attribute. Let's connect it here because here we have one value. And let's reuse this. So if we write the same word, lifetime, or whatever you want, now as you can see, this starts changing. So let's come back at the beginning. And if I press play and I stop, you can see that the lifetime increased. So at the frame 57, we have a lot of particles that have this life. However, if we go down, you can see that other particles have less and less lifetime. Because these ones, the last ones, are the new ones that appear. So thanks to this, we can accumulate this value that we call lifetime, as you can see. Let's reduce the number of particles a little bit. And let's restart again. So here you can see again how it works. Now, what we have to do is to use this information to add the particles at some frame. First of all, I'm going to add here get life time. I'm going to select a color, for example, green, something like this. And now what we want is to delete this after some lifetime. So this is really easy. The only thing we have to do is to use delete geometry and use this attribute. So first of all, we need to create a Boolean, right? So let's use here a simple Boolean like greater than. And here in A, we need to use this information. You can connect it like this if you want, or we can do a copy and connect it here. So with this setup, now it's deleting all the points because we have selected points if the lifetime is greater than zero. Right now, if I press play, we don't have anything. But if we increase this value, you can see that we can define the lifetime. So let's clean this. I'm going to write define lifetime. And let's add, for example, the color red. So you know that this is to delete the points. So this is the important number. OK, this is like the threshold. With this, we are saying, hey, check this value, the lifetime. And we define a threshold and we say, if this value is greater than this number, then delete the points. So that's why now if we press play, we don't see any lifetime greater than 18. And we can define, for example, 50. And let's start again. And now, as you can see, if I press stop, the maximum lifetime is 50. So basically, we create a new attribute called lifetime that basically is the life of the points based in the number of frames. And later, we use the light geometry to define the lifetime with this threshold. So it delays the points based in the lifetime. And if you want to make this setup easier, what you can do is to select this and press Ctrl G. And if we press Tab, we have this simple group. However, here we don't have the control. So what we can do is to connect 
the threshold here. So now if we go out, we have the lifetime control here. And it's easier for us. And as you can see, let's come back. And here we can define the life. Now, another question. How we can make this, but randomly? So some particles have a longer lifetime and others shorter. This is really easy. The only thing we have to do is to connect here or here. Remember, it's the same. OK, here is to use random value. So with random value, what we are doing now is to define a range of lifetime. So for example, if I select 5 and here I select 50, basically what I'm saying is the particles will have a lifetime between 5 and 50, but it will be random. So let's check it. And now as you can see, let's reduce a bit the number of particles. Okay, so basically what I did is to decrease the radius of the sphere. Because remember, if we increase the radius, we are having more and more particles at the start. So I decrease it like this number, 0 0.1, and I increase this number because if I leave it like before, for example, 0 0.2, that means that now we have really, really slow particles. Actually, we don't have anything, maybe one. So we need to increase this. So always play with this value and this value. I'm going to select, for example, 40. And remember, to see the difference between random value and not random value, let's check how many particles we create, for example, with 50 in 100 frames. So let's press play. And let's stop more or less here in 100. So we have this number, 241. And now, if we add a random value, that means that some particles we have a shorter lifetime. So let's check again this value. Let's come back at the beginning, press play. And let's see in 100 more or less how much we have. So as you can see, we have less particles when we use random value than not using random value. Remember, we had something like 241. So just remember, if you want to give a random value in the lifetime, use this random value. And here, select the range of the lifetime of your particles. Before we finish, I want to do a little correction if we come back here, because I call this lifetime, but basically lifetime is when the particles die. So here, basically what we are getting is the age. So let's call it age. And let's change all the names by age. So let's recall this, get age. And this is correct. This is the lifetime. So one thing is, how old is a particle, a point, and the other is to define when it's going to disappear, what lifetime is going to have. So it's just a little correction to make it more clear and not confuse you. This date and this number, then now if we come back here, this is the lifetime. Remember, if we just this, this is the lifetime. So this is correct. I'm going to leave it like that. And now here, it should appear the attribute age here. So it's more clear and we understand better what is age and what is the lifetime. And if you want to see so many zeros at the attribute column age, so these three zeros after every number, what you have to do is just to go to store name attribute here. And instead of selecting float, we need to select integer. So let's check it. Now I'm going to select integer, and as you can see, this column is more clear. So now we know with a full number the age of every point, every particle. It's just a little correction, but I think it's more clear like that. In the next tutorial, we are going to see how we can color grade these particles based in the age, based in the lifetime. So if you want to miss this tutorial and many more, I recommend you to give a like, subscribe, and remember you can donate this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.